Hello Bake and welcome to the 10,000 subscriber Q&A video Part 1 of 2 Because there were so many questions I need to cut this into videos Otherwise it would be almost an hour long Yes. So get a cup of tea, sit down, relax And watch me answer questions while performing mundane tasks in the background Yes! When did you start sewing and why? I was sewing around when I was 12 years old or something and because I was bored and I wanted new clothes for my Barbie, so... Don't judge me, this is what my mom used to do and it tastes amazing! I do remember that the big Barbie project I made was using one of my mom's nine gowns without asking her and she was very, very mad. What is your favorite color? Teal! I love it! It seems most creative people hoard certain items. What is your kryptonite? Mine is fabric. I feel attacked. Sewing machine. Sewing machines. If you could swap wardrobes with a character from a movie, TV show, who would it be? Obviously! Mrs. Maisel is my dream wardrobe. Donna Zakowska is the best costume designer there is. Would you ever want to see your creations in magazines or shows? <laughs> yes, yes, that would be amazing, but since I'm mostly recreating stuff and not doing original work, I think that's kind of iffy if I do that, but yeah, it would be a cool thing to do. How long have you, Steve, been together? And you have any relationship adverse? Even though it's been 12 years since my divorce, I'm having problems being vulnerable with a new partner. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. We've been together for 11 years, married for 7, almost 8. It took a lot of work because I'm also a very closed off person. I don't share feelings or thoughts or anything and Steve is a very talkative person. Do have sometimes communication issues still. We're far from perfect but we work well together. I think the only advice I can give you is to tear down the walls, open up and let people in. I'm also someone who's scared of relationships and people in general. Giving people a chance to come into your life kind of a big deal and you should allow it. Be careful but allow it. Almost cut my finger. Cut my finger into pieces. <laughs> I'm terribly curious about how you and Steve met, especially since I'm starting the process to move abroad with, to be with my own Steven. Oh. Congratulations! Oh my god, this is so cool. 2011, I was an au pair in Germany in a very tiny town and I went to a party and there was Steve in his pirate hat and that was love at first sight and Steve was so drunk. In his defense, it was a beer pong competition, so he has this excuse. Has he picked up on any skills or does he help you with any of your projects in other ways? So far he has sewn one scrunchie and he does help me a lot, especially behind the scenes. He's my director because sometimes I freeze and I don't know what to do so he could like do this, do that and then he helps me all the time. He's very annoyed by it. I can be a handful sometimes. They're all ganging up against me. Yeah. Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty. And you, you're an imposter. Imposter you are. It's not full time yet. And the kitties. How and when the kitties joined the menagerie? Oi! The kitties came to us in 2012. The place we were living before we were not allowed to have a dog. And I'm a pet person. I need animals. I need my fluffs. And uh, never had a cat before. So we decided to get the kitties to keep me company during my masters. It was very weird in the beginning because as I said, I never had a cat before. My mom was terrified of cats. I made a lot of mistakes with the kitties. I'm so sorry. I traumatized Chili forever. It, it, it pains me. But it's because I didn't have any experience with cats and I thought she was being sass. What's your favorite animal overall and of your children? Who do you like the most? <laughs> Uh, this is a very dangerous question. They might kill me after this. My favorite animal is, at the moment, an opossum. They're so ugly that they're cute. I'm, I'm totally in for that. And of my children, I like them all the same, with no differences and level of love. Never, never would I ever say anything to the contrary. What will be your next felting project with sushi fur? I am still gathering fur to make the Cruella coat. I think I have enough for a panel. <laughs> Did you ever get your ADHD meds figure out? I think they're working. The difference I noticed with the meds is that my brain isn't loud anymore. I had always the impression that my thoughts were yelling at me, like the inner voice was very so loud that I could not concentrate on anything outside of my head. With the meds I'm able to concentrate for longer and I didn't have problems with sleeping. I didn't have mood swings. I am taking this thing here. I don't know what it is in other 
countries. E. Franco, who is also working on some pom pom. Oh, hi! I need your help to reach 100,000 beacons. Release. 100,000 beacons and to make the 100,000 pom-pom dress I'm calling on all you beacons to send me your pom-poms to my beautiful P.O. box I don't know why I call my P.O. box beautiful but to my P.O. box any color any yarn but the pom-poms need to be one inch in diameter or two and a half centimeters because we are making Queen Elizabeth's coronation dress for me to wear in London in June of this year we have five months <laughs> Help me, please help me. Send me pom poms and tell your friends about the channel so we can release 100,000 bacons on time. Yes! Now back to the questions. What's with the dramatic leaving the screen? I, I, I don't know. Ignore, ignore, ignore. You have mentioned you speak multiple languages. Which ones and what is your native language? Yes, I do speak multiple languages. My mother tongue is Portuguese from Brazil. I speak fluent English, German and French. Not necessarily in that order. And I do scratch a little bit of Dutch. I can read and understand Russian. I started a little bit of Chinese and Turkish even and Italian and Spanish but I never went through with those so I'd say I can survive in a lot of countries I'm only fluent in four languages does that make sense Why did you start a YouTube channel? Because I was bored <laughs> and I thought humanity should suffer with me. How long do you feel it took you to find your creative groove for making videos? It kind of happened right away because as I said before, what you see is what you get. I'm like this. I just take you guys through my brain and how I do stuff. I had to change something to make things work. No, I was just being myself. Of course, I got more comfortable in front of the camera all the time. I'm not a cringy person. I don't cringe at my own stuff. Yeah, I think it happened naturally. It's was so weird. It, it really happened naturally. Are you so always able to just be yourself when you're on camera or do you sometimes feel as though you have to adopt a certain type of persona to, for all us minions? I'm 100% myself for the first time and this is why I decided never to go to a corporate job again because I was so tired of being something else trying to fit the normal box. I'm not normal. I'm all over the place. I love being this trash goblin I am. And basement troll. I love it. And what you see is 100% me. I don't know if that's good or bad but it's it's me! It's me! Do you give yourself deadlines for when projects are to be done or do you let the project dictate that? Yes and yes. <laughs> it depends. It all depends. I have a basic schedule. If the project needs more, I will shift them around. Uh, unless it's a time-sensitive project. For example, the reaction videos, I need to post them right away because of the algorithm. Because no one wants to hear about the Met Gala now in January, the Met Gala from last year. So I need to have these. I shift a lot of things around, but it works. How far ahead do you plan for big projects? <sighs> last year, I was able to plan months ahead but this year I haven't I haven't got a clue what to do yet uh, what I want to work on the schedule for January is done oh, the schedule the videos are not let's see what's going to happen how do you handle the pressures of a weekly upload and all the social media interactions Ugh, I don't I, I think it's because I don't give much thought to what I'm doing so I'm kind of quick in finishing projects and uploading videos so this for me is not really like oh my god I'm struggling to keep up one video a week schedule uh, social media interactions are a little bit hard Harder, I try to answer the comments as quickly as I can. And For now, I still can't answer all the comments that I get, but it, I know it will come a time where I will either have to outsource it or just not answer every one of you, and that, that is sad. It, it's the growing pains. It's it's necessary. <laughs> Aside from that, social media, I'm dead. I'm on Twitter sometimes, on Instagram. I post sporadically, but I do want to post more. Has being a professional YouTuber and bacon mother been more or less stressful? Or and or fulfilling than and when you were working for someone else. <laughs> it's a different kind of stress. I am my own boss and I have to keep everything under control by myself because I don't have anyone editing or anyone doing things with me. Steve does help, as I said before, but uh, it's mostly me here in the basement and upstairs in the edit room. I don't think I could go back to a normal office job. I will do this as long as I can. And as long as you want me to do this. And it's definitely a thousand times more fulfilling because every bit of energy 
energy I put into the channel comes back to me. I don't know how to explain this, but it's like I'm working a lot. I work long hours. I work every day. I don't have days off. But it is so cool to do this and to get uh, the feedback from you guys. It's really cool. It's not like I'm working for someone that I've never met because I always worked for a bigger company. So it's it's fun not to be working for a faceless big weird company anymore. How's the work-life balance thing? It's good. Not perfect, but good. I do work on weekends. Like, my schedule at the moment is I wake up at 7.30, go to the computer, edit the whole morning, and then I come downstairs, and then I work on the crafting side until max 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and then I tend to go upstairs. Sometimes I get overwhelmed by the amount of things I have to do, and I have to prepare. But other than that, it's I have more personal life now than I did when I worked for a normal company, because back then I was on call 24-7 and that's really really good. What's the hardest part of the process in being a YouTube creator? For me, it's keeping my ducks in a row and understanding the business and technical side of YouTube because I really do have problems like making thumbnails and making titles, like all the SEO behind all of it because well, what I hear a lot is that my videos are fun to watch, like the edit is fun for you guys and everything and that I should have more reach but I don't have more reach because I just don't know how to. <laughs> Administrative part of the YouTube. Still no sign of my wedding ring. <sighs> <sighs> Have you considered selling other projects when you decide to let them go? Yes, I considered. I just don't know how. So as I said, any planning video, please help me if you feel like it. <laughs> Do you ever throw or give any away? I haven't thrown any away. I have given view away already, but most of them are in my closet and I need to either wear them or sell them or do something. Commissions? I don't take commissions. But before YouTube, I started my own fashion label. I was designing the fabrics, so I was sewing dresses, selling it online, but I don't feel like sewing for other people is something I want to do. Added level of stress. So I just sew for myself and I try to teach you to do it yourself. So I don't take commissions. As I said before, I might start selling one of like a few of my projects so I have space. Do you have a fabric stash or you only purchase fabric that you will need for the next project? <laughs> I don't think I can answer this. Let me show you instead. Don't be scared though, it's a lot. Let's go through my stash. So all of my fabrics are in this bin. They are kind of categorized, but not really. The fabrics I designed myself, more fabrics I designed, cut fabrics and scrap fabrics. These are the generic fabrics I use the most, the cotton poplins and the satins. Those are my jerseys. These are cut fabrics I already use and I try to keep a swatch here so I don't have to take everything apart when I need something. I put them like this because it's also easier to see. This is in the wrong place because this is one I made myself. <laughs> Other generic fabrics and fabrics that are also already cut. This one I didn't start the swatch on the front yet. Have you ever created toys, costumes or other goodies for either of them? Oh yeah, all the time. The two toys that I made when I was unboxing my vintage sewing machines, you've seen some of them. But the cats are not that interested in anything. Sushi. Sushi, hey! Can you get out of there? <laughs> if you did make clothes, how did you manage to survive the measuring dress rehearsals? Well, Sushi doesn't have another choice. She needs to behave. And she's a very well-behaved dog, as you can see. Now she's trying to chew on something she shouldn't. But generally, she's very well-behaved and she doesn't mind wearing clothes. But the kitties, it was like, okay... Mm. But I, I don't force them to do what they don't want to do. In regards to sewing, how much space is required for a simple beginner setup? Well, when I started sewing, I had a very, very small room. It could only fit a desk with one machine on top and my overlock next to it. And I would cut fabrics on the dining table and then go back to the room and then sew everything I needed to sew. I think you can start really with a small desk, a simple sewing machine. Like You can cut the fabrics on the floor or on your dining table. So I don't think you need much space, but be careful because it's highly addictive and you will need space for other. <laughs> I hate brushing my hair so much. The fabrics and things you're going to buy, the hoarding. The hoarding is a problem. If you can control that, but if you can't, then you have a problem. Like me, I can't control it. I'm exploding always. What do you think the best sewing machine for beginners? Best sewing machine for beginners is a simple one that has only the necessary stitches. Straight stitch, zigzag stitch, and reverse stitch. You don't need anything more. What are some of the best kind of projects and fabrics for a complete beginner to try? Stable fabrics are the best for beginners to try. I love cotton poplin, even a cotton satin with a little bit of stretch. This can also be tackled very easily by a beginner. Do not recommend any sheer super stretch 
stretchy fabrics or super thin and delicate fabrics like silk or satin or even organza. Start with a good cotton with a little bit of stretch. Be happy. And it's to be woven, not a knit. Knit fabrics are not very cool for beginners. Are your fabric designs available for purchase? Because, oh my gosh, they're so far the cutest I've come across. <laughs> yes, I do. I do sell them in a German company called Stoffen and on Spoonflower. Stoffen is a little bit more expensive. The fabrics are amazing. The, the printing quality is the best and I totally recommend them. But price is a little high. With Spoonflower, you pay less, but the quality is also not that good. If you have a budget for an expensive fabric, then go with Stoffen. So yes, the links are in the description, by the way. I see you sell fabric designs on Spoonflower. Would be inspired to use design from other artists in there. Of course, there are so many good fabric designers out there. It's insane. I would, if I could, I would buy all of them. Oh, I have. I will list a few favorite of mine to put it in the description. <laughs> I totally would. What is your favorite fabric pattern? Plaid, polka dots, etc. More interesting. What is your least favorite one? I don't have a favorite pattern. My favorite pattern is pattern. Anything pattern. I love patterns. I, I really, really hate this thing. I don't know what this is, but this reminds me of bacteria and I hate it. I really hate it. Do so you pre-wash shrink fabrics then prior to cutting? If I know how the fabric behaves, I would not do it. But if I don't, if it's a new fabric, completely new fabric, then I will do. But eh, I enjoy sticking to things I know. And where do you like to buy your sewing things? Mostly online. I buy a lot on Amazon. I'm the Amazon queen in my neighborhood for sure. <laughs> I would love to know where you get your fabrics. I get most of my fabrics online on this website over here because they deliver and I don't have to go out and I trust their quality. Hamburg does not have a fabric district and it's very sad. I really miss the fabrics district and my city in Brazil was amazing. It is amazing. It's all oh, it's so good. What's the most expensive fabric you've sewn? Most expensive fabric I sewn I think it was the blackest black. I did work with silk once. A very fancy silk but it was in Brazil. From, for this life <laughs> the blackest black. The worst for you and your machine fabric you've sewn and a favorite fabric to sew. The worst fabric for me in my machine was the black black fabric because it's a woven fabric with a coating on top and this coating is kind of plasticky so the needle was sticky, the machine was sticky, everything was sticky. Uh, no, I know, I know. Have you ever sewn wrap pants? No, I haven't. But I have one on my list that I want to do soon. <laughs> What part of sewing do you love or hate the most? What I love the most is the pattern making. I, I just love the whole engineering process. And what I hate the most is buttons and zippers. Buttons, zippers, buttons and zippers. Oh, it's on, bitches. Say your last words. Out of the sewing machines that you have collected, acquired, or hoarded, do you have a favorite or one that was the most fun, interesting to restore and clean up? My favorite is the oldest one, the, the hand crank one. Super image, wow! Because I got it for really, really cheap and now they are very expensive and I really like it because it's so cute. She's so tiny and cute. I love it. I love it. It wasn't the most interesting to restore and clean up because it's, it's a one thread machine. So the mechanism is very easy to sew, but the most interesting one is the leather machine. It is what it is. <laughs>